This is a talk on chapters 12, 13, and 14 in Global Health 101 by Richard Skolnick. We're going to talk about communicable and non-communicable diseases and unintentional injuries. So we want to understand the key concepts of transmission of communicable diseases and how to prevent them. We're going to describe um, the burden of non-communicable or chronic diseases worldwide and we're going to talk about measures to prevent and control them which are major actions by public health nurses and then we're going to talk just briefly about unintentional injuries. So some key terms are communicable diseases is the transmission between human animal and human or human and human of, his, of an infectious agent. We have the epidemiological triangle picture here which consists of the host, the agent, and the environment. And so the host is the person um, who um, gets the disease, the agent is the disease, um, the virus or um, the chemical um, agent that causes the problem and then we're looking at the environment as well um, that the host is in to see how that interacts with the host because if a person is living in crowded con the environment of crowded conditions with poor air quality then the tuberculosis agent can affect the host much stronger. But then again, the host is affected by the um, immunological status and um, other factors, uh, nutrition status, in order to fight off diseases. So emerging infectious diseases are newly discovered. Eradication is the termination of diseases which is what we are always trying to do through vaccination and um, sanitation and then re-emerging infectious diseases are those that have an increased incidence so we might see a re-emerging infectious disease of tuberculosis and we did see that when um, HIV um, came into the population because they were greatly a people with HIV were greatly affected by tuberculosis. Uh, some other for, uh, terms to know are um, the paths of the way people get communicable diseases. So they can be foodborne, such as salmonella or E. coli, which um, happens when a person eats food that is carrying these um, bacteria and uh, viruses. Uh, waterborne can be when a person drinks the water or is a, a you know, washes their hands in dirty water that has cholera, cholera or rotavirus. We've heard of rotavirus connected with cruise ships. Um, sexual or bloodborne, such as hepatitis A, uh, excuse me, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, or um, HIV. Vectorborne, such as malaria, now the Zika virus coming through the mosquito, which is a vector. And then inhalation with uh, things such as influenza, tuberculosis, uh, meningitis, and then we have zoonosis which are bites by animals and um, that's uh, communicable disease such as rabies. So those are some of the ways that it is and if you know the ways that it's transmitted then we can begin to think about ways to prevent it. Uh, we're not going to go so much over the treatment but we're going to talk about um, if you know that it's foodborne such as salmonella then we have to have proper storage of food, proper preparation of food, proper preparation of the animal that's being um, processed to become our food, um, and then proper storage on the kitchen table, um, in, the, in the grocery store. So there's all kinds of um, parts where public health law, where um, policy becomes very important, and where public health nurses can teach to prevent these illnesses. Uh, we have um, different control measures such as vaccination, uh, mass chemotherapy which would be medications, we have vector control so drying up water so mosquitoes can't live, improved water and sanitation and hygiene, hygiene such as hand washing, we have improved care seeking and disease recognition so screenings uh, for these diseases such as um, the rapid uh, test for HIV screen and then we have case management which is the treatment and um, care after one contracts the disease and then again we have the case surveillance which we talked about the reporting methods that doctors offices and labs have to report up the chain to the local government goes to the state government and then goes to the CDC which is the um, Center for Disease 
um, control of the United States uh, federal system. And then behavioral change as well. Communicable diseases can be expensive, can limit the productivity and income of adult workers, um, can weaken people, can spread if they take it to work. So this is why we're uh, looking to contain communicable diseases. Uh, the burdens are there's antimicrobial resistance, um, the um, tuberculosis, multi-drug resistance, tuberculosis, VRE, MRSA, those C. diff, those things that you've seen in the hospital. Uh, ways that we can prevent that are by direct observation therapy, DOT, it's called, where public health nurses are in charge of giving medications. Uh, so this is particularly effective for tuberculosis cases where people come in, get their medication, and the nurse watches them take it uh, because it's... Um, we want the person to be on that medication and getting it every day. Then we have um, surveillance systems and global collaboration, rapid detection uh, to prevent out new outbreaks and to um, have effective quarantines. And so um, air um, airports help with this, uh, border crossings and things like that where um, people are reporting and willing to share information with other countries in order to keep their populations safe. So the Global, Outbra Global Outbreak Alert and Response Network, I will have a link for that in Canvas so that you can go check that out. It's the network of existing diseases and surveillance and um, you can see how um, that network works. So future challenges for communicable diseases includes um, watching the impact of economic crisis on the, on the government's ability to fund public health functions. So making sure that governments are not spending so much on war and recovery from war that public, other public health functions are suffering. Um, watching for major pandemics so that they can be contained and watching for accelerating drug resistance. So we have a lot of um, reasons for public health in these um, communicable diseases because um, there re remains the need for continuous development for vaccines for Ebola, for HIV, for malaria they're still working on, and for um, Zika. You could turn this off, take a moment to read this slide, and um, see where public health nurses can um, get their footing in on these problems. Again, we need to adequately train hum, uh, public health workers so that they can go in. Often they're community educators because public health nurses in other countries can be few and far between. And so if they're in charge of the community educators, those educators need to be properly trained and not um, uh, be giving out wrong information contain diseases. Okay, now we're in uh, chapter 13, which is non-communicable diseases. And again, countries do have both. Uh, other countries do suffer from diabetes. At the same time, they're suffering from HIV and, and um, communicable diseases. So uh, non-communicable diseases cannot be spread by an infection agent. They usually last a long time, and they can be very disabling, as we know, with diabetes. We want to do a lot of prevention education. We want to prevent that people even get to the disease, to get prevent obesity, to prevent cardiac disease. We can do that with food labeling. We can um, do that with policy for uh, companies to reduce sugar and salt in their foods, mass health education programs, and policies to encourage physical activity, and policies to have parks clean and safe. Mental disorders are another form of non-communicable diseases that um, um, create a burden of disease for countries and uh, we need to better train primary health care workers who are able to um, medicate and um, do programs with um, people with mental illnesses. Um, 
because of aging, because of urbanization and globalization and changes in lifestyle, we know that non-communicable diseases are growing, uh, that um, heart disease, cancer, and those are growing. And again, this last point, that countries can suffer from non-communicable and communicable diseases and with injuries. And so uh, there is a great burden uh, for the public health system for uh, many countries. Okay, so the last chapter, chapter 14, just to briefly mention that these are the major causes for unintentional injuries. We see, saw some of these in the previous chapter about adolescence, but we add um, fires, drowning, um, exposure to forces of nature, um, whether it's extreme heat or extreme cold, um, poisonings, road injuries, um, again, and these all cost society and families when wages are lost and um, um, when um, families need to take care of sick members in the home and then can't work. Emergency medical services need to be improved across the globe um, using special vehicles or for communities that may be isolated by rain uh, when the when the creeks swell and they can't get out of their uh, areas to get care for their people. Um, training truck drivers to provide first aid and transport because we know there are truck drivers on the roads and they if they are able to if they are stopped by uh, traffic they may be able to get out and provide first aid until the ambulance gets there. And then again, training healthcare personnel so that small clinic doctors and nurses and public health nurses know what to do in emergencies uh, if there's traffic accidents, if there's um, work injuries and things like that. And thank you very much for listening.